you have to say something important. I just did. Okay. <laughs> How did you and Phil meet? What? How did you and Phil meet? How did Phil and I meet? No, you did. Give me a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going after my graduation on a trip to Europe. Got on board a German ship. Uh, there were some other Smith girls, but I wasn't traveling with them. I was going to meet my sister Mary, who was in Europe already, and talking with some young men I met on the deck. Uh, turned out they were Amherst men. And at supper that night, the first meal in the dining room, the waiter brought me a, gla a glass of beer. And I said, I didn't order this. Well, the gentleman over there, and there was Phil over there raising a toast. That was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> and he uh, he said it was easy on for a Williams man to take me away from a couple of Amherst men. That was easy. <laughs> well, we had this wonderful 10-day boat trip across the Atlantic Ocean, drinking beer, singing songs, wonderful group of people, third class on a German boat with an umpa band. <laughs> People from first class coming down to have the fun because they were bored with first class. <laughs> and uh, I got off the boat in France because. Where was I going? You were getting off the boat. <laughs> You're getting married. He, he, was, he stayed on the ship to go on to Germany. He was going for his second summer of studying German in Weimar. Perfectly wonderful town, which I never did uh, visit myself. My sister Mary and I, the previous summer, wait a minute, I've lost myself. <laughs> My first trip to Europe was, was as a junior, took a over for my junior year in France from Smith College, and I had talked my parents into the fact that we ought, I ought to go with my sister Mary on a youth hostel biking trip in the Black Forest which is, as all you students know, is the southern part of Germany and was eventually the hotbed of the Nazism. <coughs> but we were simple college kids. We, the people on the, on the uh, bicycle trip, we were, were traveling with the American Youth Hostel Association guide and a German guide named Rudy who could bicycle like a fiend and our bicycles were pretty good. They had one extra gear. <laughs> what do bikes have now? 30 beers? <laughs> anyway, so Mary and I traveled that summer. I went back to finish. I went on to France to have my junior year. And after Mary graduated from Smith, she went for a graduate year in, uh, in England. And it was on that trip after my graduation that I met Phil. So now we're going to sit down for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yay. What inter other interesting things happened in Germany? What other interesting things happened in your trip in Germany and France? And then first, let's do Germany. You mean political? I no, know. anything. You know nothing about it. You're not a political Personal. lady. Tell us about your junior year in France. Your junior year in France. Oh, my French, my French family oui, oui. in Dijon. The Smith group went to Dijon for two months to get acquainted with the French way of living and then to Paris for the rest of the academic year. This was the first year that the Smith College had gone to Dijon, so they were not used to Smith students. They treated us like family instead of like boarders. The young son of the family, there were seven kids, and the one in the middle who was our age had a bunch of boyfriends, and we had a most wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and when I went back to Smith, they had a tea party for our group to meet with a group that was going the following year just to tell them what Dijon was about. 
and I recommended to a friend of mine that she go ask for this family, which she did, and she and Jacques fell in love <laughs> and were married years later because then came, this was the beginnings of the war. He was in the army and he was captured and he was in Buchenwald. Oh. He had a horrible experience and was lucky to come out alive. She kept in touch with him through the family and through care or whatever the, the uh, assistance of prisoners is. And his experience ended on what they called uh, afterwards a death train because the Germans were taking the prisoners out of there before the Americans got there to see what they were doing. Uh, they loaded these guys on the cattle cars just just the way we read about. So many in the cart you couldn't sit down. The only way space was created was when somebody gave up and died. Uh, he survived this came out of it with a wonderful uh, outlook on life. And he and his American wife have been my closest friends ever since. And he has since died, but of natural cause, not Nazism. So that makes me. <laughs> what? I have another question here, something I have always wondered about. The Wallaces were a very, very musical family. The who? You, <laughs> Wallaces, remember them, a very musical family. Everybody had to learn an instrument. Piano, well, that was violin. Mother's Hope. <laughs> I know my father, Alan, was, you, he would go and play the accordion, actually, is what he would do. He'd go sit in the kitchen, close the door with a bottle of beer and his accordion and play there for hours. It was one of his wonderful things. Um, I've seen a program from an early uh, French Central or one of those schools uh, with about four Wallace members playing various instruments. I don't know. That's folklore. No. I have the program. I've seen it. But <laughs> tell me about, <laughs> about, <laughs> about, <laughs> about <laughs> Tell me about the family and My music. take on Alan and his instrument was, uh, was a ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> and when it came time to do the dishes, he would sit on the kitchen stool and entertained us with his ukulele. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he had to put into mother and father really hoped in the old German European tradition to have a family orchestra. <laughs> and each one was to have approved, did very well on the piano. Alan, you say, with accordion which we used to call a go-to you come from you. Can you repeat that? A go-to you come from you. A go-to you come from you. What is that? They gave up by the time I came along. <laughs> oh. Uh, they went for a baseball team instead. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 we moved out to the country they started me I'm on a piano lessons, which I really wanted. Then we moved out to Allendale, and there was no, no available piano teacher. Aww. And Mary took singing lessons. She had a beautiful voice. <laughs> I don't remember the other musical instruments. Okay, well then out in, out in Malvern you took up tennis, I'm sure. Well, father built a tennis court on Allendale. He told us all we knew about tennis. In fact, he told us all we knew about anything, really, <laughs> except sex. <laughs> but, uh, Six what? The funny thing about it is at Allendale, we were not allowed to play tennis on Sunday. Oh. We go to Ocean City at low tide, those nice flat beaches, take a stick and draw a court play tennis with your hand <laughs> on Sunday, that, that was okay. Uh, I never got a rationale on that one, but, <laughs> <laughs> but Sunday was pretty sacrosanct. No funny papers unless we found them on the beach. <laughs> and, you were uh, intended to have them. If they're on the beach, God wanted you to have them. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I have a question from somebody here. What were your first impressions of Uncle Clarence? <laughs> That's a dirty question. <laughs> I can tell you, Clarence was such a happy-go-lucky guy, so devoted to learning that he picked everybody's brains for everything he could. could. Uh, That's called research. <laughs> he loved to travel. In fact, there was always a family joke about Clarence and of course old Jane, who was really a wonderful helpmate because she go along with all these ideas of travel. Because Clarence would get around the corner from your house oh. and call you up <laughs> and say, well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, the most of the households here <laughs> had that happen to them. And uh, Jane, no matter how badly she might be feeling, she went along with these trips. Oh, they went to everything. At one of my camps, I was uh, in uh, the camp musical. Uh, Jane and Clarence made the trip all the way from Malvern up to Connecticut to hear me sing in this camp <laughs> musical. They kept such good track of the family. They really were the, uh, the glue that kept us in touch with each other. I remember one summer when I was with Phil's family at their seashore college outside of New Haven, which was a beautiful little old house and it was a hot summer day, and Jane and Clarence appeared. I was with them. And I Mother Stevens them. and her sister-in-law were making chili sauce in the kitchen, oh. sweltering, because chili sauce takes an awful lot of hand work. I never did it myself, but I <laughs> loved to eat it. And Jane put on an apron and got right into this chili sauce. She was just wonderful. So that's for Jade's spell. And we showed up impromptu that day, I remember. You weren't expecting us. No. No. <laughs> there wasn't even a telephone around the corner to call. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, now I have here a question about practical jokes. Uh -huh. The family was Sorry. addicted to practical jokes. Yes. Pancakes. We yes. have six of them in mind. One of them is pancakes. What are the others? Tell us oh, about well. pancakes. Pancakes, really. Uh, mother had had one too many practical jokes played on her. Bye. So she was going to get back on the family, back to these boys who were heckling her. <coughs> so Sunday morning was pancake time. Mother took some cotton flannel cloth. You kids know what cotton flannel cloth is? Wasn't it called bunting? Uh, what? Bunting, I think. Bunting. Anyway. She cut it up into circles the size of pancakes. She dipped them into the pancake batter. <laughs> and then she sat back and laughed at her sons. <laughs> but one of the one of the uh, one of the tricks they played on her had to do with Ocean City. The Ocean City house, which is pictured in one of these uh, photo albums that Sarah just brought. It was on a proper street with proper sidewalks and telephone poles and light poles. And there was a phone call one day, Mrs. Wallace, yes. Uh, this is the electric company. Uh, we'd like you please to go out and count how many street lights there are in your block. <laughs> we, we, we'll, we'll give you time to, and there's no rush because uh, uh, we've got plenty of time, we'll just wait. But this is a survey we're making and we understand you like to help out on the community. Mother was all puffed up there, she likes that. <laughs> <laughs> so she came back to the telephone and said there were 15, 10, I don't know how many. And the voice at the other side said, uh, well, no, thank you very much. Will you go and blow them out? <laughs> <laughs> that was the, uh, you, all you boys who had, had boys as 
of the Hobnob Club. <laughs> What's that? What's the Hobnob Club? Yeah. <laughs> it was ladies with nothing else to do except go and gossip together. <laughs> <laughs> Why I got on to it, I don't know. It was a live blog, so yeah. it was a live blog. <laughs> <laughs> Grandmother Wallace was a great member of, a great joiner of clubs. She loved clubs. Your mother. Yeah, your yes. mother. She loved clubs. She was a member of hundreds of clubs, it seems. Tell us about her and her club life. Well, you, this picture that Clarence Allen was showing, who was showing about the picture? John. You, John. Has Uncle Alfred Mooney in it. He, is a, he was a husband of a member of the Thimble Club. Oh, right. The Thimble, Thimble Club. Club. Thimble Club. Thimble Club. This was ladies who didn't sew at all. <laughs> mother, the only sewing mother ever did was to darn socks. She always carried a bag of darn of, of out of the, with the socks that had to be had to be taken care of. And at Allendale, there was a pond down at the foot of the of the lawn, and mother was showing people around, and there were some ducks that had set up housekeeping. <laughs> and mother found a duck egg. She just reached out and put it in her in dawning bag oh and forgot about it for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind of a surprise. But she, she didn't sew anything. She had in socks. She was great at And the Thibble Club was a social club of wonderful ladies, all with the big hats. and. Uh, Devoted to all of us, and probably got worked on every family wedding, you know. Which reminds me of a, the, our local doctor, Dr. Kurtz, oh. who had taken care of all of us through our childhood in, in, in Melbourne. She had become chairman of the board <coughs> of the dinner party that was given to him in his, <coughs> at his retirement. So she was the master of ceremonies. And she got up and had to say, uh, well, Dr. Kurtz is a marvelous man. He's a great doctor. We've been a very healthy family. And he's done things like examinations for scout camp or taking something out of an eye or fixing up a, a broken arm. But we didn't really didn't we were so healthy we didn't have much use for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brought down the house. <laughs> Except that Dr. Kurtz got up and he said, "If I if I receive one tenth of the amount of money from the Wallace family and medical fees that I had to spend on wedding presents." <laughs> 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 what about the Grub Club? You're oh. the only person alive who knows about the Grub Club. Now that's a real club. This was a originally, originally Presbyterian, serious young man, father, 
other businessmen in Philadelphia whom he met because they were all very serious Christian young men. They'd meet for lunch, their business lunches in, in the city. And it was such a congenial group that the, grouch, the families gradually got involved and it turned into picnics and lunch groups for the whole family. And when mother and father acquired Annandale, the Grub Club would picnic would be at Annandale every year. And mother and father could sure put on a big party. Uh, and the Grub Club wives and children were all together, so it was no longer a men's luncheon club. And they had no, they came to mother to ask her name, because they knew she had a quick wit. Well, all you do is eat. Why don't you call yourselves the Grub Club? <laughs> was Grandmother Wallace a good cook? A good, uh, basic cook. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't do anything, anything fancy like the Italian like embellishments you get like today or all the foreign things. It was a good be meat and potatoes meal, but she could feed thousands of people. <laughs> she would put on when they had one when father and mother would give a dance for the kids and you had they, the dates all dressed up in their fancy clothes come out to the country for a dance. Mother said she had to feed them. You couldn't bring people out of the country without feeding them. So I remember one menu was cream chicken and peas, cream chicken and patty shells, and peas and potato chips. Well, some extra people showed up who hadn't been quite expected. So mother creamed the rest of the peas and put them in the patty shells. <laughs> <laughs> what does FHB mean in context of dinner? Oh, everybody knows oh, FHB. Oh, I don't. You know FHB? How many of you know FHB? Family hold back, no more in kitchen. It's an NMIK. <laughs> FHB, family hold back. That means it's so easy, don't ask the second helpers till they serve the company. And that was when unwanted, uh, unexpected guests arrived. <laughs> yeah. Unexpected guests arrived, my yeah. grandfather would bring home business associates or that sort of thing. Or Give me another cue. <laughs> FHB, why would, why would there not be enough food running around? because unexpected guests arrived. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Who was the best field hockey player of your sisters? Ooh. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, honey was pretty good. This looks like, <laughs> hand, this looks like your handwriting. Is it possible? Oh, well. you, that was not a plant. No, okay, it's not a plant. <laughs> we apologize, that was not a plant. Okay. Very funny. Um, <laughs> one of the best weeks in my life was hockey camp. Have Hockey you, camp. Any of you kids been to camp for your favorite sport? Well, Sports yes. camp. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Best week in your lives. You eat, sleep, and drink nothing but that sport. So it was great. Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier Sundays, that Sundays you could not play tennis. One of our questions is, in general, what were Sundays like? What They're you... deadly. <laughs> <laughs> superintendent of the Sunday school uh, and getting all the family ready. I'm not talking about the babyhood of our children, which mother has described in the, uh, in the Christmas letter. I'm, I'm talking about what I remember. Before breakfast, you had to have your bed made, your room straight, and you had to be dressed in your Sunday clothes. And mother got the preparations for dinner somehow ready and we all went off to, church, to Sunday school and then church and in the evening it'd be a return to the church for oh. young peoples and in the meantime in the oh I forgot about mother and getting her dinner one time she got up to sing the hymns found she still had her apron on <laughs> <laughs> But, and father used to wear these high, stiff collars, and father would fall asleep, 
<laughs> and when he was yawning, his neck would swell and the tongue would swell. <laughs> Okay, uh, another question here. What is your earliest memory of a family wedding? Well, family this was Ted and Nancy's wedding. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And Nancy's parents, as you all know, were in India. And uh, so mother and father put on the wedding at Allendale. And I was just so delighted with Nancy. She was the, the, new, the new girl in the family, you know? We only <laughs> had enough of us. <laughs> <laughs> and Nancy had two brothers, Robert and Dick. Dick. I was madly in love with one of them. <laughs> and uh, the younger one, was taken for a motorcycle ride by their ir 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 undisciplined cousins. <laughs> what was the name of the family of the cousins? Jordan. Anyway, Jordan. these boys came in on motorcycles and they took young Nancy's youngest brother and she was a guardian because the parents were out of the country and uh, cracked them up. <laughs> oh. Brought him back torn and bleeding. Well, actually, he may have just had a cut. I don't know. But anyway, that was a terrible thing to do to a bride to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love those guys. Yeah. Any other weddings on, at Annandale that you remember? Well, uh, Honey's wedding was oh. at Annandale. And she had a harp at that wedding. Do you what? remember? There was a harp player at that wedding. Harp player? Yeah. Harp. That's where Piper got it from. She can't a harp player, I don't yeah. remember that I particularly, do. but it was. <laughs> yeah. It was impressive. Okay. Any others at Annandale? Any other any other interesting weddings that you can tell us about? Well, Jane's wedding was in the little country church, which all the statues know so well. <laughs> and what year was Jane married? Oh my God. 30 or 31? What? 1930 or 30, 31, 31, I think. 31? No, Tell her. my parents were married in 31. So I was about 14. But it was the first chance I had ever thought I would walk down the aisle on the arm of an usher, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was standing in the back waiting for one of these brothers to pick me up and Escort me down the aisle, and he said there wasn't any room down there. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat in the back and cried all the time. <laughs> 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 oh my yeah. God. Any other weddings you remember that are worth talking about? Because they're obviously uh, important <laughs> events in everybody's life. We wouldn't be here without. What, what about some what, of the what boys? What clue are you giving me? Oh, what clue? Um, what was your first romance? Ooh. 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 I, or date? I, uh, this is the question. You may interpret it any way. <laughs> romance. Well, my first date was a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> my first romance was <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> But After Allendale was, after the Ocean City house was sold, uh, Mother uh, couldn't do without Ocean City, so she rented a house right on the beach. Tiny little house. And on the beach, I had met this young man whose name was Nate Stalker. Why <laughs> I remember his name, I don't know. <laughs> well, at supper, a knock on the door, and whoever wanted to answer came back and said to me, It's for you. So I went to the door, and here was Nate. <laughs> Can you go to the movies with me tonight? I said, uh, well, just a minute, I'll go ask Mother if we can go. So we went, we, Mary and I. <laughs> <laughs> Mary and I had done everything together. I didn't know a young man didn't mean both of us. <laughs> well, he never came again. <laughs> but I learned from Ruth, who was palling around with this boy's older sister, uh, that the true truth was, it was just for Sarah. But. Oh. Oh. So that was the end of that. Romance? Boardwalk <laughs> stories. Tell us some boardwalk stories. Boardwalk. Oh, boardwalk. Yeah, well. 
Mm. We spent most of the afternoon after we came in from the beach, uh, after supper, getting ready to go to the boardwalk at night, because that's where you would look for the young men. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, I didn't know what the boys did on the boardwalk. They were all just looking for girls, but it was a very pleasant way. Sometimes if you didn't have a chance, you'd go with the family, <coughs> sit on the bench at the side with mother and eat an ice cream cone, and uh, people watch. I think that's where I learned to people watch. And what were you wearing when you were walking on the boardwalk? Oh, you got dressed up in your best mm. clothes for the boardwalk. Oh, you did? Mm. Yeah, I, one, one summer I had a new sailor hat with quite a wide brim. And Mary and I hadn't found any young men that evening. <coughs> See, it was Mary and Sarah. We always went together. And we took the uh, Ferris wheel. And my hat blew off the Ferris wheel. <laughs> and it landed on the roof of a building. <laughs> well, when we got off the Ferris wheel, the guy who was running it said he couldn't get a ladder and go because he had to mind the Ferris wheel. So we had to stay around till he was off duty. <laughs> and get him to go and retrieve my new hat. How did you explain that? What? Getting home at 10 o'clock at night. Well, I guess in Ocean City, the bars were lower. In Annandale, <laughs> mother and father had a cuckoo clock outside their bedroom. And if you were wrong, mother always claimed she was asleep. But you were to pat her on the shoulder and say, Sarah, Sarah, I'm home, I'm aware of your bed, I heard her so so. <laughs> and then the cuckoo clock would just go, cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> and you just tell mother you're home about 11 o'clock. <laughs> 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 and Uncle Bruce added more cuckoos, right, as I remember. <laughs> 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 it was two, right? He made it 11. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what about roller skating? Did you do roller skating? Oh, roller <coughs> skating. Everywhere. This was the day of the old metal roller skates that fastened onto the sole of your shoe. And by the end of summer, the sole had come off the shoe. But uh, there was a key, a roller skate key, which you wore on an old shoelace around your neck. And you screwed that in tight up on the toes. And every once in a while, I would come undone and you went down. But <laughs> for the most part, they didn't have to fit anybody because they were expandable. <coughs> they were a wonderful sport. And uh, the one winter we spent in Ocean City, that must have been the year that they sold Allendale and were looking. No, they sold oh, Winter. Winfield. Winfield. Yeah, sold Annandale and we're looking for a place in Philadelphia. No, they're oh. looking for Annandale. Rose Hill. Did what, far? No, no. no. no Annandale was sold in 1948. They sold the house in Wincote. Well, you saw, yes, yeah, Wincote. Maybe that's house. not the yeah. reason yeah. we were in Ocean City. <laughs> it's because you sold Wincote. I don't know. But anyway, the houses in Ocean City had no yeah. basement. Yeah. The houses had no basements, so they were one floor up in the heater room and the maids room all in the basement underneath. But all under the porch was, was cement. And there was no traffic to worry about. You could skate around these people's houses because they'd gone to New York, to Philadelphia for the summer, for the winter. So these, you weren't bothering anybody. <laughs>